Sure. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I'm very happy for all of you to be here, and I'm so pleased that we have the big yeah. map right behind <laughs> us. When we talk about transportation, it's always very helpful uh, to have uh, to have the transit map behind us, which uh, clearly indicates the transit plan that our government announced back in April. Uh, the premier was with us on that day. He is obviously a big supporter a big advocate for public transit and subway mm -hmm. expansion in Toronto and in the region. Uh, so that is that is most helpful to us. Uh, we released our plan back in April. Since then, we've made a lot of steps forward. We formed a historic partnership with the City of Toronto, which Caroline Mulroney, the Minister of Transportation, announced last fall, meaning that the City of Toronto and the province are working very, very closely together in order for us to be able to build these four key transit lines. Uh, we were very pleased with this partnership. Uh, Toronto City Council also voted on and endorsed and signed the official framework uh, memorandum, uh, which means that our work is getting started very quickly. And as you may have heard already, last Tuesday, Minister Mulroney presented legislation at Queen's Park in the House. I wanted to give you an opportunity. I wanted us to meet with you today to give you an opportunity to ask questions, but also just to tell you a little bit about this. One of the challenges that we have had historically in the city of Toronto, of course, is building public transit, but also building it quickly. I think the most recent example of the Eglinton Crosstown, we can see that it almost feels like the project has been in construction forever. And that can cause quite a disruption, a disturbance, and inconvenience to the local uh, communities, to the businesses that are along Eglinton. So what the minister and I have done is we've worked very closely with several ministries uh, to gather input as to how we can build as quickly as possible without compromising any public safety and environmental standards. So what can we do? in terms of government processes where we can coordinate better, where we can schedule better, where we can work on permitting together, where we can clearly define the corridor and make sure nothing impedes in the construction of public transit. Um, we're very pleased with this legislation that was presented on Tuesday. If I may say, it's one of the best pieces of legislation that we presented in the House because it will ensure that we can build subways as quickly as possible, which I know all of mm -hmm. uh, not only constituents in Toronto desperately need and have been fighting for, but also in, in the surrounding regions as well, because as we know, uh, the TTC no longer just serves residents in Toronto, it's more, it serves many more people who live outside and, it, and get to work uh, in the city or for appointments or activities and other things. So I think with that, one of the key principles of presenting the legislation on Tuesday, Building Transit Faster Act, is with reducing the time of construction, we can reduce the disruption. Why have a project in construction for 15 years when you could do it in, in much less time? I think overall, there's a general understanding from people and residents that when you're building large infrastructure projects, be it hospitals or bridges or, or subways, there will be some level of disruption, but this is a practical and reasonable approach to make sure that we limit the time frame of that disruption. And then of course, with our strong partnership with the City of Toronto, we are working very closely together um, as well as Metrolinx to make sure that we mitigate as much as possible. So whether um, it's working with, uh, with the department uh, in terms of traffic, uh, with, with the city planning, we can do that. We will work with them. We will see which options for rerouting. Um, and we will, we will be working very closely with the city, Metrolinx, and, and MTO. And also the loss of the residents will be affected. And how are we going to control noise? Yes, uh, noise in terms of during the con during the construction period. Um, Metrolinx has been building things across the province of Ontario, and they have uh, they have standards to mitigate noise and construct uh, construction. 
Um, so those will fully be implemented. But currently what we are doing, such as the Ontario line, we are conducting the environmental assessment. And part of the environmental assessment is to look at the alignment and look at all of the neighborhoods and highlight, highlight um, things that can be challenges now so that we can take appropriate measures later during construction. So we are doing all of that preparation work now as, as we speak. And of course, um, Minister Mulroney has been very passionate about this in the House. We want to limit disruption as much as possible. That is the whole purpose of this legislation. Um, and we will, do, we will make every effort possible to do that. Yes, I think, I, I certainly think that is part of the problem. For example, one of the things we're looking at is streamlining environmental process, uh, environmental assessments. And if you've been monitoring uh, projects in the province of Ontario, they can take many, many, many years. And again, I want to emphasize we are not compromising any environmental standards. But we just want to make sure that we can get the work done as quickly as possible. So for example, I'll use the Ontario line because um, there's much work being done there. We are conducting the environmental assessment. But now with this legislation, we could also do some early works. We could look at the alignment. We could look at the land, uh, land assembly. We could do early works in terms of speaking to utility companies, which in the past, um, you know, sometimes there can be uh, trouble in terms of arranging timelines for uh, during the construction uh, process. So I think, I think the whole purpose of this legislation is to make sure that government does everything it can to coordinate, to schedule better, where we can do both work at the same time, we can initiate that to reduce the overall time of construction. I think this is very important because when I speak to people in Toronto, my constituents, or where, wherever I travel, they say, why does it take so long? Number one, they say, why can't you make up your mind? Why can't you get on one, one plan? And then they say, why does it take so long? Where in other places like Tokyo or Madrid, they build, uh, Hong Kong. of course, of course, <laughs> they build so much, so much quicker, so much faster, so much more efficiently, and so we're trying to bring that here uh, for these four key priority lines because we know the traffic and the congestion is out of control, and we also know the pressure on the existing TTC lines to take the young line during in the morning or after work. It's impossible to <coughs> get on the train. So we're hoping this helps. We're we're very optimistic. Mm -hmm. If uh, I may add on the minister's point about the bureaucracy and the, the inaction, for example, the Scarborough line, there were 12 different boats in the city of Toronto to build subway, didn't materialize. And it is unacceptable for a modern city like Toronto to go through 12 different boats and no action, Every, or the boat stays on paper. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point. I mean, uh, for example, they've been discussing building the Eglinton Crosstown since 1972. Yeah. 